Hello, everyone, and welcome to our latest episode of Learn from the Greeks. I'm Daphne Vitsikunaki. I'm the Trade Officer at the Greek Consulate in San Francisco, and I'm delighted to welcome as our guest today, Charles Vililis. He's the founder of uh, Sugla, um, the fast fine restaurant chain that is hugely popular here in San Francisco. Welcome, Charles. Thank you for joining Learn from the Greeks. Thank you for having me, Daphne. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, wonderful. So uh, I think uh, our audience uh, should know first and foremost that it's probably you who have created this category of uh, restaurants, the fast, fine restaurants. It's, uh, it's your concept in a way, your baby. <laughs> So, uh, we'll talk more about that later. I'd like to start by asking you about your family's roots, Greek roots, and uh, where you were born, where you grew up, and uh, walk us through your childhood first. Sure thing. Uh, I was, um, so I am a uh, Greek American, both sides, uh, though I was born in the US. Uh, born and raised uh, just outside uh, Boston, uh, Massachusetts, so on the East Coast, um, where I was for almost the first kind of half of my life. I've been in California now for, uh, let's see here, uh, 15 years. Uh, so, uh, but my, uh, my mother uh, came over to the U.S. from Greece. She grew up uh, in a suburb of Athens, uh, Halandri. Uh, came to the U.S. in the early 70s, uh, and my father's uh, grandparents uh, uh, immigrated from Greece. They were mostly kind of from the Western Peloponnese uh, Mani kind of area. So uh, I'm of an interesting generation, um, sort of at the, uh, I guess, uh, though I don't like to say millennial, but, uh, you know, born in the early 80s, um, and was of a generation where, uh, and of course, to immigrant parents, but uh, where there was a little bit more of, a, of an effort kind of, you know, about being sort of normal American kids. Um, so even though, um, you know, we grew up in the Greek Orthodox Church, my parents actually met uh, in, in the uh, cathedral at, uh, in Boston and, and, you know, certainly life in the, in the church and with all the other sort of rich Greek traditions were very much a part of our lives. Um, you know, other aspects uh, like learning the language, uh, which I am still sort of <laughs> working through a little bit, uh, wasn't, there wasn't as much of a, of a priority, but I think what's very interesting is that Suvla is uh, very much a uh, reflection of my relationship with my Greek heritage. What I wanted to do um, when, in, in creating Suvla was, was to find and sort of define um, so much of what makes Greek cuisine and Greek hospitality and, and the culture and the, and, and the design um, so important um, you know, to my life and to, and to share that with other people, but also to do it in a way um, where you didn't need to be Greek or really understand much about um, the language or the culture to, to enjoy it and um, appreciate it. I would say that 99% of the people that dine at Subla are not Greek, um, but we'll, what we, what we've done is is create something that has a little bit more of a California spin to it. Obviously, draws a lot of inspiration from Greece. Um, but so when you come in and dine, you know you don't need to be uh, nervous about you know uh, asking what a what an item is or how to pronounce something. So um, there is that sort of you know line there as far as as far as you know my heritage um, and being you know a proud Greek American, but also you know now now being able to share that with thousands of people a week. Uh, yes, and I can attest to that, that uh, most of the people waiting in line for, uh, to, for uh, the Suvla uh, experience are, are non-Greeks or non-Greek Americans, uh, but uh, they still think the food is super delicious and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, that, and, and it's very also very important that um, Suvla has been able to, um, in my view, uh, make Greek food here in the city of San Francisco uh, very approachable to uh, vast crowds of people. <laughs> um, 
in my experience, sometimes Americans are not really familiar with Greek food in a sense that they uh, just combine it in their head with just souvlaki, maybe, or it's not clear to them what distinguishes Greek food from other Mediterranean cuisines or Middle Eastern cuisines. Um, but uh, in Suvla, um, you, uh, you have managed to showcase not just the Greek cuisine, but give a, the experience to, uh, to the customer that he's uh, stepping into a Greek restaurant in Greece. As we can also see from the background uh, of, uh, of our screens now where you are, you are in the Suvla location, right? I'm actually in the, in the Suvla main office, um, but this, this photo here um, is actually in all of our restaurants. We, um, we uh, acquired the right uh, to the photo. It was actually taken by a, a very famous Greek photographer uh, Nikos uh, Economopoulos um, and uh, was the, the, the funny story behind the photo um, was they, this gentleman was at the um, uh, Tarvena and they were going to stop serving him because he had a little too much to drink uh, and to prove that he was still sober enough for another drink he finished his drink and held the chair at the, at the, at the same time and could still stand up. So, you know, he passed I, the I test. He passed, he passed the test. The he test. wasn't he too drunk to, to That's right. That's right. <laughs> for one more, so, uh, for one more glass of wine, right? <laughs> that's correct. That's correct. So, yeah, so this is, I thought this was a very, very fun photo that, that, that sort of shows, you know, uh, you know, it's obviously just like, you know, fun to, fun to see, fun to kind of look at, uh, and, you know, shows that kind of spirit, um, and, and energy of, of, of the Greeks. So. Right, right. So um, you not only went to culinary art school, but you also went to uh, to study uh, hospitality management, right? So I guess this was the right combination uh, to lead <laughs> to a successful career in <laughs> in gastronomy. Uh, you know, I think so. So many people, um, you know, sort of stumble into the restaurant business in one way or another. And I guess, yeah, no, I, I, I went to school for all of this. So, um, you know, it certainly helps. Um, and it's been, you know, a really, really great path. Uh, not only, you know, learning the skill sets, but just being able to, you know, over the last 20 years, you know, spend time in kitchens and dining rooms, you know, and hotels and restaurants um, and all and all types of um, environments, learning every aspect of, of what's a really, really fantastic business that's obviously um, in a very, very difficult place right now, just as a as a as an industry for sure. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, so you tapped into your Greek heritage, uh, you um, Combined it with your the fine dining experience you had, uh, and uh, Sula was created, and this chain of uh, fast fine restaurants was created. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, it was 2014 when the first Sula location opened. That's right? correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, slowly but surely, you had uh, you came up now to five locations in the city. Correct. Yes. Um, and then COVID hit. So I know Suvla was closed for roughly four months, right? 115 and, days, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And as you pointed out previously, the, uh, the situation in the, in, in the gastronomy scene is, uh, is really tough uh, because of COVID. Um, tell us how how did you approach uh, um, the whole pandemic situation? Uh, what were the adjustments uh, you made, and uh, what led to the reopening of uh, the Subla locations? Sure thing. Yeah, uh, you know, it's it was interesting because at the at the beginning of 2020, um, you know, the year was supposed to be a, a really really big, very very transformative year for Subla. We were working on a um, sixth and probably final uh, San Francisco, almost kind of a, a flagship uh, restaurant. And we were uh, preparing to bring Suvla to New York City. Um, so both of those uh, projects uh, are on hold um, for the foreseeable future. So um, to, to, to start the year off with so much energy and, and positive uh, forward motion, only to have, you know, 
the breaks kind of um, applied pretty dramatically was was very interesting. We um, we took a little bit more of an unusual approach um, with respect to how we dealt with the pandemic um, and really, you know, aired not only on the side of caution, um, but on the side of safety um, and science and, and really, you know, put the health and safety of certainly at, at the time, um, nearly 200 uh, men and women that work at Suvla, um, we really put their health and safety first, which is why we, um, we kind of went to the, to the full close um, while we um, really took the time to kind of evaluate what was happening to really put together some, some comprehensive plans um, for how we were going to approach this. There was also, you know, I think back in March, um, you know, there was a little bit more of the hope that, that this was going to end a little bit sooner than it actually did. You know, we're obviously still in it. Um, and, you know, a lot of things that I was proud about, you know, certainly the fact that we, that we kept everyone on and, and employed um, for almost the entire time that we were closed um, at pretty great expense to the company, but to be able to continue to compensate and provide health insurance for, for you know, so many people that really meant so much to us was, was really big. Um, and, you know, by sort of the middle of June, you know, we kind of, you know, we had our plans in place and we were seeing a little bit more or, or understanding more about the fact that, that we we're gonna be living with this for a lot longer. And, you know, if we didn't reopen the restaurants, you know, there would be a time where we wouldn't have any restaurants left. So um, we, we started this, this reopening process beginning in July. Uh, we reopened two of, two of the restaurants to um, overwhelming um, demand. It was, you know, the, the, the reopening was, um, rather crazy. Uh, it turns out when you when you deprive people of of Sugla for for uh, almost four months, um, they they get very excited when you when you reopen. Uh, there were um, there were crowds of people waiting for two hours. There were, uh, there were I mean, it was a challenge. The longest lines, yeah, some of the longest lines I've ever seen, uh, stretching actually several blocks, um, and for for people waiting to to, to pick up their food. So. Um, you know, we, we, we learned a lot in the, in the reopening process. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm delighted to say, you know, we have reopened all of our restaurants. Um, they're all open uh, seven days a week now from noon to 8 uh, p.m. Um, doing uh, just right now uh, in-person ordering, online ordering, uh, but for takeout and for delivery only. We're not doing any outdoor dining um, and certainly not any indoor dining. Um, so, and you know, from 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 our from our standpoint, you know, we have um, a very very robust set of health and safety practices and policies. All of our employees get tested for COVID on a weekly basis now, um, so we're so we're really able to you know have a lot more control over that. Um, and again, continue to, to prioritize everyone's health and safety. Um, and our and our goal is you know to be in this in this. Um, operating in this way until we can get our teams vaccinated and, and, you know, things can kind of start to open back up. But the biggest thing to stress is that Suvlo is not going anywhere. You know, we were, we were very fortunate to be in a position where we can continue to weather the storm and we will be able to come out the other side uh, and hopefully in a, you know, better and stronger way. We just have a really, really amazing team, you know, behind us, um, both at the, at the restaurant level. And then we've got several sort of more kind of leadership people um, that have been, you know, really uh, just doing an absolutely incredible job. Um, and, you know, we've, we've all kind of gone through hell right now. And, and thankfully, we've, we've all stuck together and we're all going to come out the other side. So that's really, really the big important thing. It's so commendable that you put the, the safety of the staff uh, first. Um, I, I can only say that uh, I realize that it's a very, very difficult uh, um, period of time and many restaurants have closed. We, we walk the streets of San Francisco and we, we see the, the devastation in this, uh, in this area. And it's not only, it's not only in, in San Francisco, the, the, the United States has lost probably, you know, now over 120,000 restaurants have, have permanently closed. Um, you know, unfortunately, you know, my wife is also in, in the in the restaurant business. She permanently closed both of her restaurants, so that's been that's been challenging to 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 deal with as well. Um, it's a it's a it's a very very real thing. You know, um, we're we're really hopeful with the with the new um, um, 
administration that we can, you know, get a little bit more sort of relief to kind of help out, you know, a lot of these struggling businesses, because honestly, um, you know, the, the United States is, is made up of, of small businesses and certainly on the, on, on the restaurant side, restaurants, you know, uh, account for, you know, so many millions of, of jobs and yes. really is, is what, is what brings all of these neighborhoods, you know, and all these cities, what, what, what makes them so, so vibrant. You know, and so when you lose restaurants like that, especially the small um, independent restaurants, and I and I count Subla in that. You know, even though we have five restaurants, you know, we're still very much a small business. We're not franchised. You know, we're not. We don't have. You know, we're not publicly traded. We don't have. You know, any of that stuff. So, um, you know, so it's it's really really important to to you know be able to provide some some relief because you know it's every day it's 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 something different. You know. Um, and I think it's restaurants, a, yeah, restaurants and, and, and entertainment and places like that it really have been hit the hardest, you know, um, that, that's been the hardest part. Well, we hope the vaccination continues uh, in a quick pace uh, so we can get back to some sort of a normal situation again. Um, so let me go back to Suvla and talk more about the menu and talk more about the wines in particular. I'd like sure. to talk about the wines and yeah. the beverage list uh, because uh, as far as I know, Suvla is the only restaurant or restaurant chain in, in the US where it's all Greek on the menu when it comes to wine even water and uh, soft drinks, and sodas, and so on and so forth. So tell us a little bit about that trip you took uh, about 10 years ago to Greece and how that all uh, evolved. Sure, of course. Yeah, no, Suvla, uh, we are very, very proud uh, to still have uh, the country's only all Greek beverage list all the way down to the sparkling water. Um, and obviously a big uh, focus on, on Greek wines, including our own uh, Suvla uh, branded and labeled Greek wines. Um, but yeah, no, I, you know, growing up, uh, you know, I had traveled to Greece several times with my family, but um, in, in 2011, um, prior to opening Suvla, but when I, when I had the idea, um, you know, I had uh, quit my job and, and uh, went to Greece for about a month um, to really kind of help to shape and and um, you know kind of finalize the the vision for Suvla and, and you know was able to um, travel you know really all all over the country you know a lot of time in Athens eating a lot of Suvlaki um, but then also you know down to the Peloponnese um, to the islands and you know exploring um, you know many different elements of the of the cuisine and and really forming great relationships with. Uh, winemakers and you know those in the olive oil business and you know all, all of those things. So when it when it came to developing the soup le menu, you know I think there there are a lot of very very unique things to it. Um, and I will be the first to say that you know uh, there's there's you know wh while we draw a tremendous amount of inspiration from Greece and there are some things that that we kind of make in a little bit more of a traditional uh, authentic way. We obviously also take a lot of liberties with um, you know, some of our menu items, which is why you will never see, you know, authentic or traditional or whatever in, in used in, in, in describing the, the uh, cuisine, but there is sort of something for everyone there. And I, you know, on the, on the traditional side, especially in the, in the winter months, and I had it for lunch again today, but, you know, I, I, I would put our Abulemino uh, soup up uh, against anyone's Yaya's soup uh, any day of the week. Um, so always, uh, especially in the, in these troubling times, it's, you know, Avgo Lemon Soup is a little bit of that kind of warm hug that you that you need nowadays. Um, you know, and of course our our, our um, roasted potatoes that we roast with all of the drippings from the from the 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 souvla are also a little bit more on the on the um, traditional side. But yeah, on the for for beverages, you know, I've always had a passion for for Greek wine, um, and uh, and now go back. I guess in this past year, I, I did not. We had a, a Greece trip planned that we had to cancel, but um, try to go back once a year um, and, you know, continue to, to, to maintain those uh, relationships with, with some of the winemakers that, that, that we work with, um, but also visiting new wineries um, and seeing what else is out there. Um, this, the, the last two trips that I've been on in the last two years um, have had a little bit more of a focus on olive oil, uh, which has been great. Um, we also only use Greek olive oil at Suvla. 
Um, and then also a little bit uh, on the on the feta cheese side and olive side as well. I'm being able to spend some time in, in some of those uh, facilities, but also you know seeing it from sort of start to finish, from from being up in the in the um, uh, porio there with with you know some of the the olive growers, all the way to seeing the the finished product. Um, so that's been really really great. Uh, last year, also in the middle of the pandemic, we launched um, a line of products with uh, the very famous retailer Williams Sonoma. Right, um, we so, Sonoma. So uh, bringing um, bringing uh, Greek olive oil uh, to their shelves um, for, for for the first time, as well as a line of uh, spices um, or spice blends uh, that we that we use. Um, as we cook some of our meats and we use in some of our uh, Greek yogurt sauces as well. So that's been really, really great. And, uh, and I guess on the, just on the, on, on the wine side, you know, the big thing for me was um, I've always maintained that, that Greek wines, not only are they delicious and very, very food friendly, they are far and above some of the best of value out there. Um, what, for, it, just in terms of, you know, what they call bang for your buck or, you know, um, uh, you know, just, you know, there, there are some Greek wines out there that you can put up against some of the best from France or Italy. Um, and they, and they really, really, you know, hold their own and they are a fraction of the price. I think, you know, the big challenge, um, from our end and, and what, and what we did to kind of combat that is, um, a lot of people, you know, uh, certainly before Suvlo opened, um, a lot of people didn't have a lot of exposure to, to Greek wines. A lot of people didn't even know that, that the Greeks made wine, even though we've been making wine since <laughs> almost before anyone else has. Um, and so we want, and, and, you know, part of that challenge too is I, I always wanted to focus more on the traditional Greek varietals. What I find to be interesting when I, when I travel through Greece is that, is that a lot of Greeks will drink more of the international varietals, even though they're, 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 they're grown in Greece, they, they want to be, they want to be drinking your Cabernets and your Chardonnays and things like that. Meanwhile, at, you know, Sublo, we're, we're serving a or or Vidiano or, um, you know, a or, or, or varietals like that, which I find to be far more interesting. Um, but one of the big challenges is that, is that a lot of, um, a lot of Americans don't know how to pronounce, they've never heard of those varietals um, and they don't know how to pronounce them. And so that was one of many reasons why we wanted to work with the wineries that we do to produce the, the, the Suvla line of, of wine. So that when you come into one of our restaurants, you can order a, a sandwich or a salad and you can order a, you know, a glass of uh, Greek red, right? Which is, which is in our in our case, but instead of having to, you know, being, you know, a little nervous about how do you pronounce this or what is this or whatever, you just, you just know what it is because uh, you can just say Greek red. Um, and we serve it in the in the in the in the traditional uh, carafes uh, that you see in the in the um, Tardenas and uh, you know in Athens and really throughout the whole country, um, which is another sort of nod to the value because the size of one of those carafes is is 250 milliliter, milliliter, milliliters or um, eight ounces approximately U.S. Um, and the and the regular pour for a glass of wine in a, in a restaurant is about five to six ounces. So you're getting more more wine for roughly the same so the same dollar amount, which again is a is a testament to the just the really really great value um, that that Greek wine brings. And would you reveal for us what your uh, favorite uh, uh, Greek varietal of uh, wine is, and maybe a combination with uh, with one of the dishes or a favorite 100%. dish of yours? Of course. So I got um, I got engaged to my wife. Uh, on uh, Santorini uh, in Ia, uh, as you should. Um, <laughs> and was, you know, if I could be, if I could be anywhere, uh, almost at any time, you know, you ask me this question, uh, eating and drinking something, um, I would be, I would be back over in um, a Moody Bay right there in in Ia um, with a with a cold glass of um, uh, a Certico from Santorini. Uh, and a little um, uh, bar barbunia um, and like with a little lemon and that's that's it that's all I need that's all I need that's so uh, I all I need a... too I'm going towards the kitchen <laughs> now and uh, yeah a surgical <laughs> barbunia and then and, and life is good Oh, uh, Charles, you're making us travel to, <laughs> to Sandorini <laughs> with this description um I want to thank you wholeheartedly for 
being part of our initiative, Learn from the Greeks. I want to wish you good luck for the future, for, for Suvla, you. for more Suvlas, for Suvlas uh, in New York and beyond. And stay safe for, to you and all the Suvla team. And to thank our you. viewers, thank you so much for uh, joining us and uh, stay tuned for our next episode. Bye. Thank you so much.